Hands on it. That has all the hallmarks of a close finish tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic match. Both players are really going for it and uh, producing a lot of great quality. A lot of close match, a lot of close frames, but a lot of high quality snooker as well. And there's a lot of snooker left in that match, no doubt. Did you expect it to be quite so close, John? I think, he, as I say, I think he's a very gritty competitor, Jamie Jones. He's one of those who keeps hanging around. I don't think he makes it easy for you. You've got to beat him. Uh, for Ali Carter, well, he'd be disappointed he didn't go 10 6, but if he looks at it logically, he was four frames, you know, he's in front two frames starting a session. He's in front going into the final session two frames front. He's made no ground up. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, uh, we'll be enjoying that one later, of course, at 7 o'clock when it resumes. But, you know, there's still a lot of reaction coming in from uh, Stephen Hendry's decision to retire last night. Uh, the latest uh, piece of information we've got, and indeed quote, comes from Neil Robertson, the 2010 champion. He's been all about sort of winning throughout his career. Um, I just think maybe it's just a little bit of a shame that maybe I, I think if he had maybe announced it before this tournament, I think the players and uh, the crowd could have given him uh, like a really good sending off and a, and a great ovation, I think, for every match. Um, they did anyway, but yeah, but I think that um, you know a lot of credit goes to Stephen for that because you know sort of respect to his opponents and that as well. Um, so yeah, you know obviously the, the greatest champion we've ever ever had in the game, most successful player, um, and you know I think I speak on behalf of all the players and everyone that we, we all wish him well. Well said by Neil. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into our live action this afternoon and in front of a full house, we thought it only fitting that after his announcement last night that took many people by surprise in the sport that Stephen Hendry is hanging up the queue for good, that he should be allowed to take a bow on the stage he's graced for 27 years. And in that time, he's made 127 centuries, three maximums. He's played 90 matches here and won the world title a record seven times. More than a snooker. Player. He's one of the greatest sportsmen ever to emerge from Scotland and indeed Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen here in the Crucible, will you welcome the best of the very best, Mr. Stephen Hendry. stage upon which he stars since he was a 17 year old and goodbye to the sport in which he set countless records many of which will never be broken so great scenes here in the crucible this afternoon pretty emotional scenes as well and only fitting that this crowd should be allowed to say farewell to one of the game's greats but the championship goes on and obviously we have some wonderful live action this afternoon featuring two men Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson who of course were inspired to play the game by Stephen Hendry and others his legacy will go on and on obviously and now they know these two fellas also what it takes to win the world title and what a quarter final they have so far produced. years ago I, I put a lot down to uh, the fact that I actually had something to do in between sessions um, especially when the tournament gets down to the semi-finals and, and final stages um, you know the last thing you want to be doing during an interval or, or during um, a mid-session break is to uh, think about snooker. I always love playing video games and you know all that sort of stuff and um, Joe Perry and Mark Davis will, will eat about 16 creme eggs while they, while they chill out and watch DVDs so I think it's really important to, to find something that um, you know you can do in between sessions. Massive Chelsea fan. Um, you know, I think uh, any of the doubters that um, thought I jumped on the bandwagon a few years ago, I definitely proved them wrong the other night when uh, when, Ch when we beat uh, Barcelona to get through in the final of the Champions League. I, um, I screamed my head off um, when uh, Torres scored the winner. And Michaela Tab actually came in and said that she could actually hear me from inside the Crucible Arena, and uh, you know, so I had to sort of keep it down. I think my form's been fantastic. I think um, 
uh, throughout all the season. Uh, this has definitely been my most consistent year coming into a World Championship. Um, so I'm coming into this uh, as probably one of the form players and I've played, uh, played really well in my first two matches. Ronnie's probably one of those few players like you know Hendry and, and John Higgins that um, you know, he's one of the, the real big time sort of players that um, you know any player sort of um, it, it, it's a dream sort of playing them, especially at the Crucible. Most enjoyable thing about Ronnie's game is, is how quickly he can score and just how easy he makes the game look. I think um, you know if you're watching Ronnie Sullivan play on TV, you'd think that snooker was the easiest game in the world, and I think that's probably, um, in my opinion, what makes him probably the best break builder that's ever played. The way I just look at it, I'm three matches away from winning the tournament, so there's not that pressure of, you know, will I ever have a chance to win a world title? You know, I, I, I've done it before, so uh, being Australia's first ever world champion, and you know, um, I think I was 28 at the time when I won it, so you know, you can't really. It's not as if I was maybe 21, 22, and I'd have a lot more opportunities. You know, I think a snooker player's best period in his career is, you know, probably from his, his early to mid late 30s. But you know, to to have won it, to, to put that um, behind me, I, I believe I can go on and win. You know, at least try and win a couple more now. Disappointed with that. And that's what you've got to do. It's all square. <laughs> Clean as a whistle, and they're all square again. Three each. The blue will be enough to leave Neil eating a snooker. Well, what has he done there? Where's the blue going to finish? Is he going to fluke the snooker? Well, I'll tell you what, it's amazing. The balls never seem to forgive you. When you make an easy mistake... If he plays it like that, Chavis is going to leave the pot up. That's right in the centre of the pocket. Well, all the players who entered the Crucible here this year be hankering for a one-table situation, and that's exactly what we've got today. A round early for the Rockets and the Gritty Aussie, because, of course, it's finished over there. People who've bought the tickets looking to see the Maguire or Hendry match, I'm sure they won't be too disappointed to see what should be an absolute classic this afternoon. Rob, they're all yours. Thanks, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've just said goodbye to one legend, but two players waiting in the wings have yet to complete their legacies. What a cracking session this will be here. It's quarter final, quarter -final time at the Betfred.com World Snooker Championship. Two of the very best waiting in the wings. So let's get the boys on the base. <laughs> Please welcome the most naturally gifted player ever to grace the game. At times he has been sublime in this championship. He dispatched Mark Williams in style in the last round, bidding for a ninth Crucible semi-final, the three-time champion of the world. Blink and you'll miss him, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! And his opponent, he came over from Australia nine years ago with barely a penny in his pocket. Now he is one of this great game's leading lights. Winner of six ranking event titles, world champion here in 2010. Can you hear the thunder from down under? Neil Robertson!
it seems fitting that Ronnie and Neil have the floor to themselves this afternoon, doesn't it? Everybody wants to see this one, including...